So here's a problem about the sad state of the Chicago Cubs. Turns out, if they sell just $2 for a ticket, they're only going to sell a sad 30,000 seats. And if they raise the ticket by a dollar, the cost of the ticket by a dollar, the attendance is going to drop by 1,000 seats. And f that, that's true for every additional dollar above that $2. And we want to know the ticket price that maximizes revenue. So it seems like we might be in a tight spot. We might not have enough information to solve this problem. Right. Let's start by writing revenue equals price times quantity. We can always kind of write this, right? This is always true. And remember the goal, the goal, kind of the part one of our goal from the introduction, is that we want to write this right-hand side as just in terms of one variable. We don't want both P's and Q's over here. We want only P's or only Q's. So how are we going to do that? That's really the problem here. And it turns out this information they give us up here is enough to do that. It's enough to write P in terms of Q. So let's kind of think about our point slope form of, an, of a line. And why can we do this? Well, the way they talk about the attendance dropping for each additional dollar, that's a constant change. And so we know it's a linear relationship. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make P equal to Y. So I'll have P minus my point here is 2 and then x will be q and x0 is 30,000 um, times x minus 30,000. But what's the slope? So remember that the slope is defined as difference in output, so difference in y, or in this case p, over difference in input. Um, so usually x, but in this case q. So we know that a, what, the, what this is telling us is that a difference of one dollar in charge is going to result in a 1,000 attendance drop. Now if we simplify this equation, we would get P equals negative 1 over 1,000 Q, and then plus 30, so negative this times this is equal to plus 30, but plus 2, so we'll get plus 32. So the reason we've done this is it tells us price in terms of quantity, and so when we come back here, we can write r of q is equal to, rather than price, we'll put this thing in here, because this thing is equal to price, and we'll be multiplying that by quantity, right? So rather than price, we have negative 1 over 1,000 q plus 32. And from here, it's going to be the same as problems we've seen in earlier videos from this section, right? So r of q is equal to negative 1 over 1,000 q squared plus 32 Q, and to maximize this function, you would take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So R prime of Q would be equal to negative 2 over 1,000 Q plus 32. And so if you set that equal to zero, you'll be able to solve, I'm going to simplify negative 2 over 1,000 to negative 1 over 500 Q plus 32. And so Q is going to be equal to 32 times 500, or 5, 5, 500, which is 16,000. And to verify that this was a maximum, you would need to indeed do the R prime of Q. You would need to do the first or the second derivative test. And you would find that if you plugged in a number to the left of 16,000, something less than 16,000, you would have a positive number, and to the right of 16,000, you get a negative number, telling you that this thing does indeed maximize your revenue. It also asks us for how many tickets are sold at that price. So this is the price that maxim, or this is the quantity that maximizes revenue. And to get the price that maximizes revenue, we would just want to come back here, so to our relationship between price and quantity, and we'll get negative one over thousand times sixteen thousand plus thirty two or that the price will be if you plug this into your calculator you will get sixteen dollars per ticket so not very high but the Cubs aren't very good so that's what they have to charge to maximize their revenue for each game so the big idea was to just start with this revenue equals price times quantity and then get price in terms of quantity from the information they gave us and then set the, get the derivative, set it equal to zero, 
to get your maximum point.